Hello everyone. So it has been quite a week since, one, since the eclipse, which it hasn't even been a week since that. And then also since I did the self-blessing ritual, which I can say has been the most profound ritual that I have ever done in my entire life or really in the course of what the almost 20 years that I have identified as a witch and have been doing rituals and spell work here and there. This ritual has been the most profound and like it just felt so powerful and so like I don't know I can't even describe words can't describe how I'm feeling post this eclipse and I'm going to try and my purpose for sharing this and it's just going to be a brief um sharing but my purpose is to really hopefully inspire you into you don't have to necessarily do this ritual per se but into just making a deeper connection with your divine self and really stepping into your feminine power specifically because I really think that whether you identify as male or female or neither the vibration or the core or the essence of the feminine aspect the feminine power is so important right now and there's so much going on within the political social climate here in the united states and just in the world as a whole like we really need to tip the scales back towards this feminine power that is within all of us right and so um it's really interesting with this particular ritual or just with this experience because i always you know um try my best to follow my intuition and I'm watching the stars, as a lot of you know, and whatever comes to me in that moment comes to me. And there's so many different, you know, sim significations or symbolism within what's going on with, with the planets right now and how they communicate and how they naturally connect with us here on Earth. And so I might look at Venus and Aries completely different than someone else looking at Venus and Aries or essentially how we will guide others to work with the energy. And so I want to just talk about like the power of the Venus and Aries energy right now, as well as the power of really making the deep intention to connect and merge with your divine feminine aspect of yourself. And so I said like this practice naturally came, um, came to me. I knew um, for months that I really wanted to do something um, meaningful, something powerful with the alignment of Venus and Jupiter and having um, the sun and the moon also in Pisces just to really um, maximize on that energy present. And I even more so wanted to do it because my Venus is in Pisces in the fifth house, which um, it is in its state of exaltation and it's also in its joy. And so I really wanted to um, honor that placement within my own chart. And so everything just kind of came to me. And I do want to share the book that I adapted the ritual from. I changed up some things, um, but for the most part, it was true to what was in this book. And it's called The Holy Book of Women's Mysteries. It is by Susanna and Mies Budapest. Hopefully I'm not butchering that name, but this is an amazing book and as I'm holding it and talking about it, I'm getting really intense chills because when I started my Instagram and I started my Instagram with the intention to share everything that I was doing as far as spirituality, as far as astrology and tarot and I started the Instagram as Dakini Magic and that was due to my practice at the time where I really was connected to Green Tara and I was really connected to um, the Dakini aspect of Tara, which is actually Red Tara um, as well, which kind of correlates to that dark feminine kind of wrathful energy, similar to Kali, similar to Lilith. And, you know, obviously I had no idea of the way the journey would unfold for me personally. And so I was in California on vacation and I came across this book in a used bookstore and I was just flipping through it and I saw Urania and then they briefly within like a couple sentences defined who Urania was and that was it. And for some reason, or I know why it was astrology and astronomy and fortune telling and all that stuff. I was like, whoa, Urania, that I just felt that. And I was like, I feel like that. I like I want that. I need that. I have to identify or not. I have to identify, but I want to structure my business or my like community or just what I have to offer around this 
whatever I'm feeling from this vibration of speaking the word Urania of like what I'm feeling and perceiving and reading that word Urania. So it's all interesting how it's coming back to this book here. And I came back to this book. So I got this book, what was that about six years ago? And so I came back to this book um, last year, at the end of last year, because I was, I had been diving into Venus and Venus, my focus on Venus is something that has been just intuitively led um, over the past like almost a year. And so I came back to this book because I really just, I felt, I was like, I wanted to learn more about Aphrodite. I'm like, I, I want to learn more about Venus and Aphrodite. And I looked through the con the contents or the index and I saw that it was mentioned here. So I was like, let me read through this. And within that, um, I came across this self-blessing ritual, which was so powerful, so profound. And I just had a ton of experience um, or a ton of just like synchronicities while I was doing the ritual. And what was most powerful um, one, I will say, um, with this ritual, I timed it very carefully. And with astrology, there is the practice of, it's called electional astrology, where you will pick an opportune time or auspicious timing to basically either perform some kind of ceremony or ritual. A lot of people use it to um, pick a, a particular time, an opportune time to get married or to start a business, which I've done to start my business and things of that nature and just other little random things. But as far as like doing a ritual and alignment with um, the opportune time or auspicious timing, this was the first time. And it was so um, meaningful to me personally because it was aligned or this is a practice that is aligned with what the ancient Egyptians did. That was pretty much a lot of their astrology. They really watch the movements of the planets um, and they really focused on what was on the ascendant, the eastern horizon and what was culminating ahead. And they timed that perfectly to um, and with that timing, they perform their particular ceremonies and rituals. So that felt very um, at home for me. That felt very aligned to do that in this way. And so there was already this like strong emotion and feeling going into and intention going into the ritual. And so at that time, there were two times um, during that day that were very auspicious to Jupiter, Venus. Um, what was it? The Sun, the Moon, and Neptune, all in Pisces, right? And this is right before the eclipse. And so there's a building culmination to like this change and just like this big shift already. Uh, but it was before we entered the eclipse, which is really, really important. I made sure to not do this during the eclipse. Um, so with that said, um, that opportune window was actually at like 4.30 in the morning. And so I was like, fuck it, I'm going to do it. I know my daughter would be asleep. So it was probably like the best time for me, honestly. I just had to get my ass up. And literally, so I had my alarm go off at 4.15 or 4.20. And right before my alarm went off, I was in the in-between space of um, being asleep and being awake, right? So, but I remember it's like right before I got up and I could see from my bed, there's a window that faces um, southwest. So I can always see like the moon at night, like I see, yeah, the moon, wherever it is, like on its path, like getting ready to set, right? And so um, at that time, the moon was really, really dark. It was balsamic moon, so I didn't see the moon. But in that in-between phase, I saw this twinkle of like moonlight. It was like quicksilver, I guess you could say, but it was like this flash of like, if you see like that picturesque um, star that comes through, like a really bright star, it, it like shines and then it, you know, goes back to like its normal um, energy or like visibility. But it did that and it did that. And then when I saw it, it was like the goddess is pleased is what I heard. And then literally af right after that, my alarm went off and it was time to get up and do the ritual. And I was just like, like it was so beautiful and so to really um keep this quite short I um since then I've had really intense dreams where um there has been a dark feminine shadowy really intense kind of almost scary 
um, figure in my closet and I sleep facing my closet. There's no window or sorry, no door on my, my bedroom closet. So it's just, it's open. And at night it's really, really dark. Like I can't see in there obviously. And so that felt, and it was just like this whole, like I've had two dreams so far. I'm sure there's going to be one more and there's so much with the dream. So I don't, I can't even get into all of it. But what I've gathered thus far is like, because there was a sense of fear um, and even in the second dream that I had recently, there was like almost like this combative, like me trying to like tell it, I was telling it to get the f out. I'm like, get out of here. Right. And then in the same time, I was like, wait, why am I saying this? Right. I had, I checked myself and this again was in the in-between space. Right. I wasn't awake, but I wasn't fully asleep. Right. I was in the astral. And so what I gathered from that is that I am learning to, um, one, I'm facing my fears with a lot of things, or that's a representation of that. And that dark feminine in the closet is literally my dark feminine aspect of myself that I am seeking to merge with, to integrate with. And the just the fact that it's in the closet, it's bringing attention to the fact that it's dormant within myself, right? And I'm really um, there's a bit of resistance in embodying that for my own personal reasons in my real life. So anyways, that was my share on where I am with that now. And I will definitely share more. Um, but I really want to point to the synchronicities because it's really interesting with Venus and Aries. Um, like I said, in, in my cosmic climate, I wasn't really excited about Venus moving into Aries because I just love Venus and Pisces. And I have a bit of a challenge with Aries energy because I tend to, you know, with my Venus and Pisces, um, my moon is in, in Capricorn, um, I'm Scorpio rising. I'm very private and I kind of just don't like to like, really, I don't like conflict. And when it was interesting, when I was in my early 20s, I definitely was more outspoken. I was more rebellious and just like really tapping into my Aquarius sun. Um, but nowadays, I'm just like, mm, I don't feel like dealing with it. I'm just going to do my own thing, right? And so Aries really challenges that aspect of myself because I have to like speak up for myself. I have to um, fight for my freedom, essentially, or hold those strong boundaries and be very strong within my presence, right? And so I feel that is very significant right now with Venus and Aries and for the collective um, and for what's even coming up, right? Like, everyone not just women but we are all being guided almost forces like how many times are we going to hear this same narrative how many times are we going to let some like higher power or some authority decide what we do with our body or what you know what we eat and just so many things it's like we've given away our power and our independence right and it's time to take that back and with venus and aries this is the point where we are having the ability to step into this power and reclaim our freedom with grace, with compassion, with balance, right? Um, but also being very, um, you know, uh, I was going to say uh, savage about it. So that might be for some people, but you know, whatever feels right. So, but it's really important to merge with the divine at this time, that divine aspect of yourself. And as we are coming up on eclipse season, right? Or we're in eclipses. As we're coming up to this eclipse in Scorpio, this also is ruled, Scorpio is ruled by Mars, right? So there's going to be, we're going to see what, what's Mars doing right now. Um, Mars is in Pisces still. So again, that element of compassion and grace. Um, but with this, this Scorpio eclipse, there's a constant purging and shedding of our fears of emotional attachments like okay you're emotionally attached to eating this particular food well this food is toxic now like how do you take in some new asp or how do you find the nourishment within that right grow your own food um and i'm saying it like it's easier said than done and this is just what's coming to mind so it might be kind of like messy sounding but you can kind of get the idea of what is coming up right now and so as i'm speaking we have the moon in cancer which is so beautiful which is very divinely aligned that i'm speaking of this now we have mars again in pisces or in pisces and um the sun is still in taurus right and so um the sun is very close to Uranus. I think it um, had its conjunction with Uranus and um, today, I think, or it was either earlier today or yesterday. 
However, what that means is that that sun, right, that creative expression, even the divine intelligence in conjunction to Uranus is the transformation, the sudden change, the insurrection, all of that coming up, right? But it's going to take a little bit of finesse because we're dealing with that Taurus energy, um, which is like fixed earth. It's literally like trying to dig up the roots of a tree, right? This is really in deep and it's going to take time. It's going to take commitment, persistence, and really being able to stand strong within yourself, right? And so if you are interested okay. in this self-blessing ritual, one, I would recommend you do it okay. after okay. eclipse season. So um, the Scorpio okay. full moon eclipse is on May 16th, right? And so I would do anything like this after um, eclipse season, just personally. Um, and yeah, so if you're interested in this ritual, it will be either if you're watching it on Instagram, it'll be in the link in my bio or it will be in the description of this video if you're watching on YouTube. Also, if you have any comments or questions, definitely feel free to reach out to me or comment here below. I'm always down to engage and just bounce ideas and share experiences and things of that nature. If you're interested in your own chart, looking at where Venus is or even looking at Aries and see what's going on with that area of life because there's gonna be some focus on Aries for some time with Jupiter moving into Aries. So there's gonna be a lot of like, let's just do it. Let's like be bold and go for it, right? Um, so yeah, you can book a reading with me via the link in my bio or um, message me if you want to have a reading via Zoom because the link in my bio is for recorded readings or the link in the videos for recorded readings. So thank you so much for hanging out and um, I will be connecting with you all again soon. Take care.